Thanks to CuriosityStream for partnering with us on this video. CuriosityStream now comes with Nebula for free, so you can watch all our videos and those of all our smart friends ad-free. Find our link in the description. I've been having kind of a hard time lately. This is the first real winter I've experienced in a long time. So with the weather getting colder and the evenings getting darker, the pandemic raging on and political upheaval surrounding us, I've been finding myself wondering how we're going to get through the next few icy, depressing months. It's hard to see spring on the other side. And it's hard to not feel sad about all the things we've lost or missed out on this year. But the other day, I was sitting at home trying to distract myself from feeling stuck inside when I realized a silver lining. With the cold and dark comes a new sort of comfort. The dreamy coziness of long nights in front of the fireplace, sipping hot cider and tea, watching movies and starting art projects, more time to write and sleep and carry on quiet conversations. Even though I think winter will be tough, I'm really grateful to be here in my new home with my partner and my cats, with so many activities and hobbies I can explore in the coming months. I'm really grateful for a lot of things, actually. I have been incredibly lucky in many ways, and I'm thankful that despite the challenges of this year, my family and I are happy, healthy, and relatively stable. Even though I can't really get together with my family in person because of the pandemic, I know we'll all be feeling a lot of gratitude for the things we do have when we gather around our virtual Thanksgiving dinner table. So this week, particularly as we approach the holiday, I've been thinking about gratitude, why we feel it, why it's good for us, and perhaps most mysterious of all, how it manifests in the brain. Here's what I've figured out. Gratitude is, in essence, a positive feeling that's experienced in response to receiving kindness or assistance from another entity. We feel appreciation for the generosity of others, and it makes us feel good. While gratitude might sound like kind of a weird thing to try and study scientifically, there are actually entire research centers working on understanding how being appreciative affects our brains and our mental health. The Positive Psychology Center at the University of Pennsylvania and the Greater Good Science Center at the University of California, Berkeley are both places that support research on happiness, compassion, and gratitude among other things. Broadly, they're interested in better understanding how to protect and foster human well-being. The findings from these institutions and others in the last couple of decades have begun to provide some interesting pictures of how and why gratitude is good for us, individually and collectively. Psychologically, gratitude is associated with an increased sense of well-being. People who maintain a sense of gratitude report a whole bunch of positive emotions, like feeling less stressed, less depressed, and having stronger relationships. Grateful people also tend to be more resilient to trauma. Some of this is probably linked to coping strategies. Grateful people tend to use more positive coping strategies when they encounter difficulties in life, like getting support from other people, growing from their experiences, reframing their challenges, and working out plans to address obstacles. On the flip side, they're less likely to use negative coping strategies, like denying there's a problem, abusing substances, or blaming themselves. But it can be kind of hard to know how exactly gratitude is having these positive effects on an individual's life. Like, maybe if a person is already less stressed or sleeps better, they're more able to feel grateful about their current circumstances. On paper, it could end up looking like gratitude is good for sleep or stress levels, when it's really the other way around. So researchers had to actually create situations where some volunteers were forced to think grateful thoughts, while other control volunteers were not. In one study from the early 2000s, a group of American college students were asked to keep a gratitude journal where they wrote about things they were grateful for, while other students wrote about less positive emotions, like the things that annoyed them. The results showed that just writing about things they were grateful for led to students feeling better about their lives as a whole, 
and to the students having more optimism for the upcoming week. The study also found some evidence that gratitude journaling was linked to increased physical activity and improved sleep, results that are supported by more recent research as well. Proponents of gratitude argue that it's beneficial because it basically shifts your focus away from your negative emotions to focus on your healthy ones. When you're spending your time thinking about how grateful you are to your sister for making you soup while you're sick, you're not spending as much time thinking about how annoying it is that being sick means you can't spend time with your friends. That doesn't mean that feeling negative emotions is bad or that you should avoid it, but rather that maintaining a sense of gratitude about your life and the people around you can help you keep focused on the positive instead of dwelling on the negative. Still, psychology is something that's kind of nebulous to me. I know that it's real and I know that it works, but I'm a biologist. I wanted to look beyond the psychology and dig a little bit more into the neuroscience. It's only been in the last 15 years or so that neuroscientists have really tried to understand what gratitude looks like in the brain. There's some small evidence that individual differences in proneness to gratitude might be linked to differences in gray matter volume in some areas of the cortex. Really interestingly, at least one study has linked relationship satisfaction and a sense of gratitude to a specific genetic variation in a gene affecting oxytocin secretion. Sometimes called the love hormone, oxytocin is secreted by the pituitary gland, and it's important for social bonding and feelings of empathy. Apparently, that also includes gratitude. Other research has looked directly at brain activity. In one study, scientists took two groups of participants, one who had written gratitude letters for someone they appreciated and one group who hadn't, and stuck them in an fMRI machine to look at their brain activity. While in the fMRI scanner, they had the volunteers do a pay it forward task where they were given money and told to pass it on to a charitable cause if they felt grateful. Participants who reported feeling more grateful were, of course, more likely to give more money to a charitable cause. And they showed increased activity and sensitivity in their medial prefrontal cortex, a brain region associated with learning and decision-making. The researchers interpreted these results as indicating that people who are more grateful are more attentive toward how they express that gratitude. Another fMRI study pulled from the stories of Holocaust survivors who had strong feelings of gratitude for the people who had sheltered them and provided life-saving food and clothing during the war. The scientists had participants imagine they were survivors themselves and think about how they would feel if they received such gifts. Participants who reported feeling more grateful showed higher levels of activity not only in the medial prefrontal cortex, but also in the anterior cingulate cortex, a brain region associated with attention, motivation, and modulation of emotional responses. These brain regions are important for a lot of our higher order cognition and decision making, including our personalities, our understanding of other people's minds, social bonding, and our morality. So essentially, it seems that when we feel grateful or when we express gratitude, our brains turn on areas that help us better empathize with others and feel more socially connected. Why does this happen at all? Why bother feeling gratitude? Well, we don't really have a clear idea. Like I said, this is a pretty new field. But if I had to guess, like so many things, I'd say it's probably evolutionarily advantageous in some way. It's not too hard to understand how that might be. Humans are super social creatures, and we've evolved to thrive in highly interconnected groups with a lot of social bonds to others around us. Gratitude is associated with relationship satisfaction and improved communication, as well as personal well-being and reduced stress. If an emotion feels good, we're inclined to seek it out again in the future. And maintaining a healthy sense of gratitude for the gifts and assistance we receive from others is good for maintaining a society. On a personal level, I totally believe that gratitude is good for me. While being grateful doesn't erase the challenges in my life, it helps me remember all of the ways in which I'm lucky to be where I am and to acknowledge all of the people who have helped support me. 
it makes me a little less resentful and a little more resilient. So I think I'll hold on to my gratitude as tight as I can during these upcoming winter months. I think I'm gonna need it. Speaking of grateful, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is, of course, an excellent documentary streaming service with tons of exclusive series, like Curious Minds Happiness, which explores thought-provoking questions about gratitude and happiness at a granular level. But more than that, they love supporting educational-ish creators and our work. So they have partnered with Nebula, a platform we recently joined where creators like us can worry more about creating awesome content and worry less about the algorithm or demonetization. Nebula gives you ad-free early access to videos from YouTube's smartest creators, including neurotransmissions, as well as a bunch of original series. Because CuriosityStream loves creators, this Thanksgiving, you can get access to both CuriosityStream and Streamy Award-nominated Nebula for less than $12 for the entire year. That's 41% less than the cost of CuriosityStream on its own. All you gotta do is click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com backslash neuro and sign up. And just to pull back the curtain a little bit, this is our first ad-sponsored video ever. We'd really love to make a good impression so we can sustain the channel on spots like this. So if you're interested, clicking that link really helps us out and will support our efforts to make more exciting videos for you in the future. Hop on over to curiositystream.com backslash neuro if you'd like to help our channel and help yourself. What are you grateful for this fall? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, make sure you're subscribed and follow us on Patreon, Instagram, or Twitter. We're going to have exciting news soon about where you can pre-order our upcoming book, where we talk about all kinds of topics like this one. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out.